New tool for the mill. Ah. Well, as a proof of concept, I'd say that went very well. I'm going to have to take the vise off though, so I can move the place the shaper in a better position. But otherwise, when I have a bit more time, I think I'll use the mill to clean up the top of the shaper. Run, do all that siding stuff by hand. What I'm trying to do is to thin down these sides, but I can see I'm going to have to flatten this first using the ways as a reference I think I see what the problem was you know how I'm using the ways as a reference Guess who forgot to bolt down the waist securely? I think it's time to stop being stubborn and put the end rule back in. There is a heck of a dip there but it should be okay. Perfect, there are still some low spots, but I'll take it. Oh, you went in there. Yeah, I thought I was done with the taps too. Yeah, that was it. The milling stuffed the threads up, so I just had to re. I'm going to chase them with the t thread tap. All that malarkey should have had two benefits. Yep, that ram is much more solidly seated on there now. The other benefit is that now the contact between the column and the side should be a lot better. The bad part is I've got to rejig the back parts now because there'll be a slightly different distance. Alright, I didn't say this very well, but the width of the shaper column is defined by the width of this casting here. I've narrowed this casting by taking the sides off a bit, so the shape column itself is narrower. So. I need to adjust both this threaded rod spacing and also drill a new hole for this clamp because the screw is in the wrong place now. So the distance on the gasometers is that much. I'm trying to make it so the gap here is the same width the whole way down. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do it. Currently listening to Uriah Heap. The ink on this marker isn't very good. Then it was the cheapest one at the dollar store. Right, I've marked out on this where the existing screw holes are. And this is where the new one needs to be. Mm. I might just do a fresh one, I think. 
The reason I'm doing a fresh one is because the placement of the hole that I'll have to drill in the other one is right on the edge of another hole which means that the drill will not want to go nicely into it. So that goes on the scrap pile. It just occurred to me, rather than transferring these, I might get better results if I actually, you know, measure. That should be centre to centre. Yeah, 96.18. Incidentally, I'm using my new floodlights for this, so let me know if you like the lighting in this little segment. There's a little bit of, of distance in the width up here, but I'll take it. Alright, put this in a safe place. If you're thinking to yourself, that looks like he's making it up as he goes along. You're not wrong. This isn't ideal, because I still have to sort out the T-nuts for, the, for this um, hold-down kit. I'm going to put that hex on. Yep, that's got it pretty close. Right, I'm going to go with that because if I push it any further I'm going to dig into too much of the casting I think. I just realised I'm not done with this. Alright, now that I've got my ear muffs off Lessons, lessons learnt from this. Number one, I don't really like using this face mill. The finish is a bit crap compared to the end mill. And it doesn't like the cuts that the end mill can do. But in this case, it, it takes up a lot less vertical space. Because the mill is already at its maximum vertical travel and I can't move it up any higher to use the end mill. The other thing I learnt is that this is an insane amount of stick out, but I didn't really have much of a choice because I can't exactly put it on its side and mill the top. At least I don't think I can. But I now have these flat all the way across and this flat all the way across. So now I just have to scrape in the wear pads and scrape in the top of this, make it nice and flat. It's also a lot more reliably flat now than it was with the sandpaper. So now I can tear this down. 